Hello students, today I am going to talk to you about factors influence selection and arrangement of furniture. All of you should be interested in furniture arrangement in the interior. This may help you to understand the selection and arrangement of furniture. A house is a dwelling unit consisting of walls, floors, doors, windows, roofs etc. in which human beings live. A house may have a number of rooms. Each room will be only an empty space until it is furnished properly. Furnishings give meaning to a house. A space become a living room or a dining room based on the furnishings used in the room. Furnishing includes arrangement of furniture, use of floor covering, treatment of windows and doors, proper lighting and use of accessories. These features tastefully arranged can result in a home well bring comfort, health, happiness and personality of the owner. Today we shall study the various aspects of the selection and arrangement of furniture. The objectives include to understand the factors influencing the selection of furniture and what are the factors you have to consider while arranging the furniture. Now let us see what is a furniture. Furniture are movables either for use comfort and ornament with which houses equip. It acts as a mediator between people and architecture. Functions of furniture. Furniture fulfills the specific function required such as sitting, sleeping, writing etc. It provides comfort for our activities. It organizes the space within the room and exhibits one's personal taste. It also brings forth the personality and character of the individual. Factors you have to consider while selecting a furniture. This can be classified under three broad headings namely utility and economy, beauty and character and construction. Let us see about utility and economy now. The major aspects include one utility, mobility, comfort, flexibility, space, cost, length of service etc. Now we will see about these in detail now. The first one is utility. When selecting furniture, one should consider its usefulness for a particular purpose. There are varieties of furniture to perform various activities such as sitting, sleeping, relaxing and study. Mobility. Furniture should be movable or movable arrangements can be fitted to heavy furniture so that they are easy to move. A furniture should not be heavier than necessary for use, strength and stability so that they are easy to move. The people in transferable jobs can feel easy in purchasing lightweight furniture or dismantleable and reassembled furniture. Comfort Comfort is related to pieces of furniture in which one sit or sleep as well as the height of the tables, chairs and desk and the leg room around them. Besides, the handles of chairs, knobs and doors and drawers should be well placed to give a firm pull out or push out. Chairs and tables should have smooth finished surface. The upholstery furniture should be provided with proper spring for comfort. Flexibility. This pertains to furniture that can be used in more than one room and for one purpose. Example, sofa come bed. Dining table used as work table, study table used as ironing and so on. They occupy less space, cost and serve many purposes. Space. Space required for placement of furniture has become increasingly important in recent days as the home spaces are becoming smaller and smaller. The present day designers have reduced the protrudings, mouldings and curved legs of traditional furniture. Foldable and stacked furniture help to conserve space to a greater extent. Cost Cost includes initial and maintenance cost of the furniture. Initial cost of furniture depends upon the materials used, design and construction. Cost and maintenance includes the cost incurred on cleaning, repairing, refinishing and reupholstering. Since furniture costs are generally high, one should buy essential furniture first and then add gradually whenever the budget allows. Furniture should be bought 
only from well established reputed shops and great care should be given while buying furniture on discount sales or auction. Length of service. This factor depends upon both physical and psychological durability. Physical durability depends on material used, the design, construction and finish. Psychological durability depends on the liking of an individual in future towards the furniture selected at present. Beauty and character. Beauty and character is entirely a subjective appraisal because individuals vary markedly in their taste. Some may prefer ultra modern design while others prefer charm of antiques of synthetic material. This can be revealed by the expressiveness and style of furniture. Expressiveness. The furniture should express the theme of the room. Example, a cottage expressing informality, comfort and simplicity calls for furniture of the same characteristics. The furniture should suit to the style of the house. The furniture styles are traditional, contemporary and modern. Traditional furniture are furniture designs that have come to us from past generation. Example, Queen and style. Contemporary refers to rather a broad category of current designs. Many of these draw upon traditional styling for inspiration without actually reproducing any one style in particular. The modern style developed in the earlier part of the 20th century breaks all ties with previous design. New forms, unusual proportions and use of modern materials characterize furnishings that bear little, if any, suggesting past heritage. Construction For proper construction of furniture, make it sturdy, comfortable and increase its durability. The purchaser should check the bottom, sides, back, inside and the front of each furniture piece. They have to consider the firmness, joints and corner blocks, legs and posts used in the furniture. The style and quality of any particular piece will determine how many steps are necessary for its production from beginning to end. Naturally, the more labor involved, the higher the production cost and these are always reflected in the retail price. Furniture construction is a complicated process. It is necessary for the consumer to know in detail the techniques but there are few points that should be discussed because their influence quality and cost. Shaping is one of the process that is involved for whole pieces that will be made of solid wood or for some parts such as pedestals and legs. The lumber is cut to the desired size by saws. A plane may then be used to shape the edge. If no decorative effects are required, the next step may be finishing. Much of this can be done by machine but some areas still require hand finishing. If any decoration is involved, then you can go for carving. Certain types of decorative carving can be done by machine, but the results are somewhat crude and this process is used on mass produced inexpensive furniture only. But better qualities, the initial work may be done by machine but hand labor is used for the finishing. Hand carving is found expensive because the process is slow and laborious. It must be done by skilled craftsmen who are trained in the art. Some carved effects are achieved by the use of wood compound molder to the desired shape. The motive, often a beaded molding, is then glued in place on the piece of furniture. Turning is again a method to decorate the furniture. Legs, posts and bases must be shaped by a turning lathe, which cuts symmetrically indentations to form a design. The effect of a twisted rope is achieved when the block of wood is moved slowly along the cutting machine. Fluting is again another way to decorate wood. Lengthwise grooves may be cut into posts, legs and pedestals. Reading, the term reading refers to a decorative process of applying 
parallel rows of beaded mounting that project from the surface. It is opposite of looting and it too is used to legs and post. Joining The various sections of a piece of furniture must be joined firmly and securely. Careful joinery is an art that is of utmost importance to the customer, yet most of it is hidden from you in the finished piece. One must therefore rely on the words of the manufacturer that the piece has joined with care and precision. Nails, screws and glue are also used to hold section together at points of strain. Nails are the least desirable but they are quick and cheap to use. Screws and bolts are more desirable when they are inconspicuous. They are frequently used for added security. A metal washer under the heat prevents a screw from wearing away at the wood. Good quality glue is also used to hold surfaces together. Old fashioned glues would be eventually dry out. But new developments have produced glues that are firm, durable bonding agents. They are resistant to the ordinary hazards of use such as heat and moisture. Various methods are used to join the framework of chairs, chests, tables, desks and so on. On high quality furniture, the joining areas near perfectly matched as possible, smooth and tight. One should beware of crevices and gaps that have been filled in with glue or other filler. These reflect a low standard of workmanship. The various type of joints used in wooden furniture are as follows. One is butt. This is a simple joining made by nailing or gluing two ends together. It will not withstand much strain. Mitter. Each edge is cut on a 45 degree angle and the two are held together with glue, nails or brads. Used on mouldings, pictures and so on. Lap. Two pieces have equal size grooves so that they are flush when placed together. Tongue and groove. A projection on one edge fits into the matching groove on the other edge. Used on drawer sections and wooden panels used for wall covering. Dovetail. A series of projection fits into a series of grooves. The grooves are often fan shaped. This is a secure joint that usually indicates good craftsmanship. Dowel. A small peg of wood is used to join two edges. The dowel pins are used for various types of joining on chairs, frames for upholstered pieces and so on. Double dowels provide added stability. Sometimes the dowels are grooved so that air can escape when the dowels are driven into place. Mortise and tenon. This is one of the strongest joining for frames of chairs and other case goods. A groove on the edge is cut to fit a projection and the groove may be square or triangle. Sometimes glue or screw are added for extra reinforcement. Drawers and doors. If the piece of in question has drawers, they are frequently a good indication of general level of workmanship. The drawer should glide back and forth easily. Those mounted on metal tracks often have wheels or ball bearing to ensure easy movement. A drawer stop or tiny lock on the back of the drawers prevents it from pulling it the way out unless the level is realized. The inside of the drawers on good quality furniture are smoothly finished and treated with a coat of shellac or varnish. The top edges on the back and sides are rounded for smooth operation. Draw sections are joined by dovetailing on better quality furniture. In poor quality, the tiny projections split away and the drawer will fall apart. This is another example in which quality is dependent on a combination of good material and good craftsmanship. Drawer pulls also offer some indication of quality. All handles and hardware on any piece of furniture should be firm and substantial enough to withstand strain over a longer period of time. Drawer handles should be fastened in a place by screws or bolts that go through the drawer panel. On some inferior furniture and hardwares, it is merely nailed in place on the exterior. Finishes Manufacturers of fine quality 
for nature take great pride in selecting materials. The surface of wood is treated and polished to develop a beautiful color and patina, a mellowness or glow that comes from much rubbing and polishing. The grain pattern is carefully placed to enhance the design of the piece. Sometimes panels are formed of matched sections to form a intricate design. On poor quality furniture, surfaces color and gloss may be applied in the cheapest and quickest manner possible, often a quick coat of varnish in which even the brush marks are evident. There is a hard shine rather than a subtle sheen. The initial steps of furnishing may be done by machine, but the final operations in high quality furniture are usually done by hand. Several ceilings and application of stain develop a uniformity of color and bring out the beauty of the grain pattern. Some woods must have a sealer to close off the pores of the grain. Any special decorative effects such as ebony finish or tartar shell would be applied at this stage. Wood finishes are applied for various reasons to produce or develop color, seal off the pores and produce smooth level surface protect the wood from heat, moisture, alcohol and so on and to decorate the surface. In fine finishing several applications of stain, glaze, oil or wax require sanding or rubbing in between. As these processes are repeated a richness and depth of the tone develops. Naturally the number of operations affects retail cost but high quality finish must be applied in a series of process and can't be hurried. Construction of case goods Firmness is an important feature of good construction. It depends largely on how the different parts are joined. It is rigidity under pressure. Joints the various section of piece of furniture must be joined firmly and securely. As most of the joints are hidden from view in the finished piece, one has to rely on the words of the manufacturers. Nails, screws and glue are also used to hold sections together at points of strain. Nails are the least desirable but they are more desirable when they are unseen. Corner blocks, they are triangular block or strip cut to fit into unseen back of the corners and glued or screwed to the frame for reinforcing the joints. Legs and posts should stand firmly on the floor. They should look large enough to run the length of the leg or post. This increases the strength of the furniture. The drawers should glide back and forth easily. The inside of the drawers should be smoothly finished. The guide strips under the drawer should hold the drawer straight. Hardware The quality and appearance of the hardware are important for well designed strong hinges and stoppers for easy closing and opening of doors, latches, caster, wheels and their sockets and smooth movement of the furniture. Upholstered furniture Generally wooden furniture and other furniture are not very comfortable to sit because of the hardness of the material. Hence, it is furnished with cushioned surface. This is called upholstering. Many prefer to use removable cushioning of foam rubber or coir foam instead of permanent upholstery. Permanent upholstered furniture should be checked for its springs, filling, fabric, etc. Frame Oak Teak, maple etc. are the commonly used ones as they take glue and finish well. In case of cheap furniture, items less expensive should be avoided. Seat. The comfort is a desirable feature in any furniture and thus the seat should be comfortable. Coir and cotton material make poor cushions and generally synthetic foams make a more comfortable seat. Welting. Welting is a length of a fabric usually tubular in shape used to reinforce the disguised seams on upholstery, slip covers and bedspreads. Welting is frequently used in the seams of upholstered furniture items for added strength and durability. Seams 
seams should be well finished, smooth, even and strong. A firm clean finish with no projection ends shows good workmanship. In cheap quality furniture, seams start coming out after a short span of time. Webbing Webbing stretched across the seat frame is the basis of all traditional upholstery. In the case of chairs and sofas, webbing is closely interlaced, springs are fastened to webbing and to the frame securely. Spring The coil spring is the best one and is generally used in good quality furniture and is used closely to each other. Proper turning of spring is important to get it tight. Stuffing Well made furniture has ample amount of filling selected so that it will retain its shape for a long period of time whereas poor workmanship will be evident after relatively short period. The filling will shift and shape gets distorted. Muslin A layer of muslin is added and covered with the final upholstery fabric. Black calico is used to cover the underside of the seat. Fabric the furniture that will receive hard use should be covered with a fabric that resists both soil and wear. Closely woven fabric is a good choice for the upholstered furniture that will receive hard wear. Gimp and braiding. Tags and the raw edges of fabric on chairs are concealed under banding or gimp. Bands of the cover fabric may be laid over the tack heads and fixed with decorative nails. Tack nails and pins. Tacks made of steel should be always be used for upholstery. Fine tacks with small heads are used. Decorative nails used to conceal raw edges are made in several finishes. Beds and mattresses. Good beds are major item in furnishing a home. Hence, they should be selected with special care. There is a wide variety of types available in the different size and different prices. The popular type of mattresses is foam rubber and cotton felt. Cotton felt are used commonly in India and are less expensive. Cotton batting or cotton fabric that have not been felted or poor quality cotton tend to mat and may cause the mattress to become lumpy. Well constructed mattress are stitched through cover and filling to prevent the shifting of materials. A sturdy reinforced edge will prevent the mattress from sagging at the sides. Now we will see into the furniture arrangement. The general rules applied to furniture arrangement includes the following. Select furniture based on the proportion to the room and to the family using the furniture. Place large pieces of furniture on large wall areas and small pieces on small wall areas parallel to the structural line of the room to retain good proportion. Select a center of interest and subordinate all other interest. Observe the rules of balance. Large pieces of furniture on one wall should balance doors, fireplace, windows or large pieces on the opposite wall and each wall should be balanced from top to bottom. Keep traffic lanes in the hall and in each room clear. Avoid using too many furniture in a room. All the furniture should not hug the wall at the same time, should not occupy the center floor area. Scatter upholstered pieces of furniture among wooden pieces. Arrange all furniture with purpose and function of the room. The guidelines for arranging furniture in different rooms. Living room. Living room should be livable for all family members. Select a center of your interest around which the furniture may be arranged. The furniture may be grouped based on the activities such as entertaining guests, recreation with music corner, study or reading and so on. A comfortable sofa and several chairs are most essential pieces in the living room. It should express the spirit of welcoming the friends and relatives of the family. Hence, it should be treated in an impersonal way. Dining room. Dining area can be arranged either in the center of room or towards a wall area. The chairs should be 
arranged around the table with adequate space around the chairs for the users to pull them out for occupying the comfortable and serving of food. A serving table should be placed near the kitchen so that it is easy to transfer the food, store the cutlery, crockery, dishes used for meals or dinner. Use less number of pieces to create a restful effect. Keep the background simple and use only a few objects. Keep the tablewares orderly so that they can be handled carefully. If a separate room is available for dining area, Arrange the furniture either in the center of the room or towards a wall area. Arrange a conversation area along one wall area. Serving table should be placed near the kitchen so that it is easy to transfer the food items or possible fridge should be placed parallel to the wall area. Bedroom. Location of doors and windows restrict bedroom furniture arrangement. Arrange furniture for conveniences with a center of interest. A flexible arrangement should be made so that each piece of furniture serves more than one purpose of the room. Good ventilation should be provided. The furniture should be arranged in such a way that it may keep extending to the middle of the room or all placed parallel to the walls and in the corner thus leaving the middle space full. A well lighted space in front of the window is best for arranging a table. Storage cabinet should be provided for extra bedding. Personal belongings should be placed in the bedroom. Bedside lamp should be operated from bed. Furniture for reading and writing can be placed here. Thus furniture selection is a prime means of expressing individuality in interiors. In order to make the best possible selection, it is important to understand the quality of design, materials and construction with the price of it. As possession of furniture involves a sizable investment, it is important that you have to choose wisely and arrange the furniture in a proper manner in each room so that it would provide maximum utility, comfort and relaxation. Hope this lesson would have given you adequate information on how to select furniture and how to arrange. With the help of this knowledge, I am very sure that you will be able to arrange the furniture in a proper manner other than selection. So all the best for you students, hope you will be able to select furniture wisely and arrange it in a proper manner.